Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new here, my name is Bianca. I'm a content strategist and creator. I work with small businesses to help create the content of their dreams. And today we're gonna to be taking a little peek into my workflow and how I work with my clients, specifically in Asana. Now you might be thinking, what is Asana anyways? Asana is a web and mobile work management platform. So it's used to organize teams and their tasks to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Similar to other organization platforms like Notion, Asana is a lot more like team based and it focuses a lot on the tasks, whereas Notion will organize on a variety of different things. If you're interested in Notion, I actually did a Notion tour here on my channel. So if you wanna watch that, I will link it in this video right here. If you wanna take a look at how I work with my clients in Asana and how we organize our time, then let's get straight to the video. So in order to take a peek at my work management system with my clients, let's head on over to my laptop and we'll take a look at Asana together. Welcome to my Asana workspace. This workspace is for my business and I have one workspace for each of my clients due to client confidentiality. I cannot show exactly what the workspace looks like with my clients, but I can show you what mine looks like. And I basically set it up the same way as all my other clients. So you'll be able to get a good idea of how we set it up and separate the tasks. So why did I choose Asana in the first place? There's two reasons. One of the reasons is that the clients that I started working with early on, they were using Asana and the second reason is that the free version of Asana is very well-rounded. For someone who's like just starting out and they don't have like a work management system, I'll automatically put them on Asana because you can still do a lot with it. And it's really easy for me in terms of my workflow that I don't have to jump between a whole bunch of different work management platforms. So that's what's working for me. And thankfully, all of my clients are currently on Asana either because they were already on it or because I have transitioned us into it um, because they didn't have any work management um, sort of system. So that is why we are in Asana and it's really easy to just switch my workspaces up here. We are going to take a look at now our different projects. Right here you'll see that my projects specifically are broken down by platform and some of my clients I do that if they you know, if they have just themselves to think about. But I do have other clients who are um, either agencies or marketing managers, and they have clients themselves. So in that case, we will separate each project into one client. So one project right here will be client A, another project here will be client B, client C, so on and so forth. The reason why we put them into different projects is so that when we take a look at our tasks in the calendar, they're beautifully color coded and you know exactly where you're going and what you're doing. Also, when you separate them out by project, you'll be able to take a look at all of the past tasks that you've done in that project. If you do manage to, you know, want to get the not free version, the like upgraded version, you'll get to take a look at workflow and messages and timelines. So this is something that I just let my clients decide. If they just need the free version, that's like totally enough. Some of my clients have decided to upgrade to a, like a bigger and better one just because they have a lot of clients to manage. So putting tasks in Asana for me is the easiest way for me and my client to not forget tasks in general because a lot of things happen, a lot of things are on the go and so our kind of rule of thumb in terms of processes is that if it's not on Asana, it might be forgotten. Just like as a rule of thumb, we tend to put everything in Asana and add a due date to it just so that I know and kind of can plan my week accordingly. I'll be able to add tasks. So my clients will be able to add tasks for me and I'll be able to add tasks for them if I need some extra information on anything. And the easiest way for me to do it is really on the calendar 
board and you can just add a task right here, click into it and you can add and assign people to it. So I'll even add my own tasks and assign myself to it, add a due date and add to a project just so that it's well color coded. My clients will also be able to give me some thorough descriptions if it's not something that we've talked about. This will allow us to kind of get the ball rolling without actually having to call each other every single day to kind of get more information on things. So they'll be able to assign a task for me, um, add the due date, and then add a little bit of descriptions. In the comments here, I'll be able to give them what they want or ask any questions about a specific tasks. And the person that assigned it to me will be notified. And so it's a really great way to kind of have that back and forth with, again, without having to like send emails or send each other voice notes. So it's a really easy back and forth and it allows you to have a little bit of separation between having people on your phone and just putting it in a sauna, if that makes sense. Within a task, you can also add some subtasks. So for example, here in my upload YouTube video task, I have these subtasks to create the thumbnail, create the description and add the tags once you've uploaded the video in general. This will allow everything to kind of stay in one place. So if you have one task that require many different steps, it's really great to add the subtasks in there as well so that you make sure that nothing is forgotten. Another feature that my clients and I use a lot is making tasks reoccurring. So there are reoccurring tasks that I do every single week. For example, posting on the social media in the stories, I'll tend to add these as reoccurring tasks. And so you'll be able to just add it right here on set to repeat in the due dates. And so you'll be able to tell Asana when to repeat the tasks. So let's say I have to do something every single Thursday, it will repeat. So it won't show every single repeat all at once. It will only repeat once you've marked it complete. So once I've marked this complete, it will automatically boop, add it to the next week. And so once you complete that, it'll add it to the next week, so on and so forth. So that was an overview on how I use Asana with my clients with all of the like basic functionalities. There are a lot of different functionalities on Asana that you can keep growing and keep digging deeper into it. And so that is kind of how I use it the most. I use it very much calendar style and adding the tasks that I need to, as well as the subtasks. Like I mentioned before, you can also take a look at it as a list. So this is kind of, kind of like how we use it on Trello. If you've used Trello before, this is kind of how it looks. You can also take a look at it as a list as well. I like Asana because you can look at it in a lot of different versions and you can really dig in deeper if you would like to. I don't have a lot of different examples of different things that I've used on my own personal Asana, but you can really work with your client and see what works best for you. This is kind of how we've set it up. It's been working really well. If you have any questions in terms of Asana, please let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to answer it. Thank you so much for listening to my Asana walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.